So you may have already seen a couple of my other projects where I make water dance to music. One where I pound the music directly into the water and then read the resulting waves, and the other where I just simply dump the audio signal into the water and electrolyze it in a small region. And then I take a laser and shoot it through that region and then magnify it, allowing you to watch the currents and the particles and all of the bubbles of the electrochemical reactions, which are directly generated by the audio signal. Now I decided to try to make the water sing. How do you do that? Well, with an oscillator. I call this the AEIOU, or Aqua Electric Ionic Oscillator Unit. So, uh, long story short, this disc here has a whole bunch of holes on it. As it spins around, the holes basically open and close. I don't know if you can see the gap on the end of this tube. And there's a contact in this tube. The other contact for the, for the audio signal goes directly into the water. Now, as it spins, it opens and closes it, and thus allows water to flow. As I've shown, or electricity to flow, as I've shown with the salt water potentiometer, chemical reactions actually back it up. The first version of this device was a simple container inside another container with a lid that had two holes and spun with the motor on the top here, obviously. And uh, that worked well enough to flicker lights, but it didn't go fast enough to produce an audio signal. So I simply had to amp it up with a whole bunch of holes in a bigger disc. Let's see it in action. So, we simply take it, put her in the water, and turn her on. Now she's turning. Okay, and let's turn on the audio signal. I don't know if you can hear that, it's a little quiet. So let's move you closer to the speakers. And on. And off. And on. And off. And let's adjust the frequency, turn the motor down a bit. So as you can hear, there's clearly an audio signal coming out of there, and it's directly related to the spinning frequency of the motor. It actually sounds a lot like the vibrations coming off of the motor, and that's just because they happen to match. Now there's an Im imbalance in it, kind of a wobble in the sound, and that's coming from the fact that I just kind of randomly punch those holes, trying to make them as evenly spaced as possible. So it's not one steady frequency, it's actually rotating through several different frequencies, uh, very, sim very close, but it's got a wobble in it as well as I believe the disc also wobbles up and down a bit as it's spinning really fast and the, the, the wire is not very stable, it's kind of a hack job. But it's enough to prove that it works and give me the motivation to move on to the next steps. So one of the things to remember here is that what's happening is as it opens and closes it's not actually opening a door like we would normally think in a lot of electronics. This is a saltwater potentiometer I built a while back. What it does is it actually allows you to uh, achieve the same effect as a nicely sensitive potentiometer by simply uh, lowering a, ca a wire into the water. This is because chemical reactions back up the electrochemical conduction. So what's happening here is the electricity is passing, and as it's passing, it's creating a chemical imbalance, I guess, between here and the other side. And the imbalance prevents the conduction of the electricity from uh, going on. And as the wheel turns, it opens it up and it creates a bi-directional flow of water, dispersing this side into that side and that side into this side, evening everything out and allowing more electricity to conduct. So it's more like it's pulsing the water. In this case, it's maybe even better to consider the electricity in the water as one. They're not really one, but because it's so dependent on the chemical reactions, in this sense they are. There's a base level it always kind of conducts because there's always going to be some diffusion. But, and there's going to be a starting phase where it first has to build up the imbalance, but after that, that sub-effect is negated, you can effectively treat it as the water is literally carrying the electricity. It's actually very, very flexible. It brings it much more down to the human realm and a lot easier to manipulate.